Hey there, this is Carrie Clark from speechandlanguagekids.com. Today I am going to be talking about group therapy and how you can make group speech therapy work for you. Also, if you want to see any of my other productivity hacks for speech therapists, you can find those at speechandlanguagekids.com slash productive. All right, let's jump right into the content. So I, am, I want to present you with four different approaches to group therapy that you can use. The first is lesson and practice approach. Then we have the stations approach, the one activity multiple skills approach, and finally the ungroup approach. Let's go through each of those. The lesson and practice approach is good for social skills, language skills, fluency, voice, anything where all the kiddos are working on the same thing, although I will say this doesn't work great with speech sounds. So how do you do it? Well, you will sit all the children down and you're going to present a new or an old skill in a lesson where you discuss it and the children listen to you. This is very much like a teacher teaching a class. Then you will include demonstrations on how to do that skill. And after you do that, you will have the children pair off and practice the skill. So this would be role playing if you're doing social skills or they can ask each other questions and, and use their language skills or fluency or voice skills to practice. The way you would collect data for these sessions would be to go between the pairs and take data during their practice time. So that's the first approach. The next approach would be the stations approach. Now this one is good for speech sounds. It's also good for any work where the children are all doing different things because they are going to be working independently and also these children need to be independent workers. So how does this, how does this work? Well, each child is going to have a page of work in front of them that they can do independently. This could be word lists or a grammar activity, something that you have taught them how to do and they know how to do it. Um, if your child is just able to do sounds in isolation independently, that's fine. Whatever they can do independently is what should be on this sheet. And keep in mind that being able to practice the skill independently is going to get them closer to being able to do that next skill that they can't, the next level of the skill that they can't do independently. So if they're working on a sound in isolation, that's going to help them get to the syllable level because they're practicing the correct way to say that over and over again. Also, each child is going to be doing their independent work at a station for X number of minutes. So you're just going to uh, pick a time based on how much time you have total in your group and how many kids you have in the group. And after that many minutes, a timer goes off and they rotate stations. So you want to have a bunch of different stations set up one for each uh, child that's in the group. So you're gonna have a fine motor station, or you could have a fine motor station, which would be something like squeezing Play-Doh or a stress ball. You would have a gross motor station where maybe they need to do hopscotch and jump once for each word that they're practicing or something like that. You can have a writing station where they're either tracing lines on dry erase paper or they are writing their words out or something while they are practicing their words. You could have a yoga station where they pick a yoga pose and they have to hold that pose while they are practicing their words over and over again. And then you also need a speech therapist station. So this is where you are going to be working one-on-one -on -one with the kids. So when the kid gets to your station, you work on them, work with them on whatever skill is the next level of the skill that they are currently able to do independently. So let's say you have a kid who's practicing his sound in isolation all the way around the stations. He gets to you, you're going to start working on it in syllables and see if he's ready to do that. If he is somewhat independent at that level, then you're gonna go ahead and bump him up to the next skill. So if he can do syllables pretty well, with a little bit of prompting, then you're gonna go ahead and say, okay, this is your new independent work, show him how to do it, and then that's what he's going to continue to do throughout the rest of the stations. And then you'll do that for each child that comes to your station, work with them one-on-one, -on -one, take your data. I would recommend collecting data on the first 10 to 20 repetitions that they have at your station, and uh, then send them on their way to do their independent work all the way around. Also, you can send their independent work home, and that makes good practice, home practice for them. So there's the stations approach. Our third approach is the one activity multiple skills approach, and I think this is what most people do for group therapy. And this is good for non-independent workers, so if you have kiddos who you can't trust to just go around to their stations and do their work, um, this is good for using books or games. You're just going to have everyone doing the same activity, so like reading a book or uh, playing a game, something like that, and each child is going to wait his or her turn to answer a question or practice his skill. 
and you're going to ask a different question for each child based on what he's working on. So you may have everybody working on different sounds, and before their turn in the game, they have to practice their sounds. The only problem with this method, well, one of the problems is there's a lot of wait time and a lot of um, time where kids are just kind of sitting there, not doing anything, waiting for their turn to practice their skill. So for data collection for this one, in order to keep things moving, you want to take data on either one student per session or take data on everybody but only do it once a month. So you could say, today is Johnny's day to take data and I'm just going to take data on him. Next time I'll take data, data on Susie. Or you can just say, okay, the last session of the month is going to be my data collection day. That we're going to take data on everybody on that one session. So those are the two different options. That way you can make sure that therapy keeps moving quickly and you're not being held up by uh, taking a lot of data or ruffling through data sheets, at least not more than once per month. So that is the third system of group therapy, which is one activity, multiple skills. Okay, the fourth and final one that I want to talk to you is what I'm going to call the ungroup approach. This is good for working on speech sounds or discrete language skills like teaching a grammatical marker or something that is um, you can just pare down to one simple skill. This is good for kids with behavior or attention problems. It's also good for kids who have a lot of other services and it's good for your sanity. So how do we do this? Okay, well the hard part is you're going to have to rewrite your IEPs so that each child has two to five sessions per week of five minutes each, okay? And these are individual sessions. So instead of coming twice a week for 30 minutes in a group, you're going to have maybe two five-minute sessions or three five-minute sessions. Base the number of sessions based on how severe the problem is or how many skills that they need to work on in a week. So you are going to pare down their num the number of minutes quite a bit but they're getting individual sessions that are short. You're gonna schedule four or five sessions per half hour block, depending on how close together their classrooms are, because keep in mind you're gonna to have to walk between the two classrooms. And then at that child's time, you're gonna pull him into the hall right outside his classroom, so you're not having any travel time to go to the speech room, and you're just going to drill for five minutes. Now you can do some simple little activity that's gonna keep them interested, like maybe they put a coin in a bucket every time that they say a word, but it needs to be an activity that is not going to take away from them getting lots and lots of reps. Because the key here is that they only have five minutes, but in that five minutes, you wanna get 30, 40, 50 reps in, which is way more than they would have gotten in 30 minutes of a group group therapy session with four kids. All right, so you're getting lots of reps in in that five minutes. It's pretty much just drill. For data collection, you're gonna take data on the first 20 to 30 reps per session. If it's a type of skill that takes longer to do and so you're not getting that many reps, you can narrow that down. Um, but if it's it, something where you're really just doing drill for five minutes, you can easily get 20 to 30 reps in in a minute or two. So uh, go ahead and take data on the first ones and then you can work with the child on increasing to the next level if possible or um, helping them achieve a better accuracy on that. And the last thing I have on this slide is for real. Okay, yes. In a research study, children with this program made 37% faster progress despite having fewer minutes. So this is a legitimate method, and you just have to keep in mind it's all about the reps, not about how long they're with you. So if they get 50 reps in five minutes, that's way better than getting 20 reps in 30 minutes. So think about how many repetitions you can get in your current groups and how much you might be able to get in this sort of an approach. So those are the four different types of therapy. I will quickly go over a few other tips. How do you manage behavior in groups? Here are some ideas for helping those kiddos who are having some behavior problems in groups and are not focusing or working. You can get kids involved with each other's therapy. So you can have the other students listening for uh, the first student's productions and having them judge if it was a good one or if it needs a, a repetition or if they need to try again. You can have um, you can give the children other tasks or fidget toys when it's not their turn so that they have something to keep them occupied and they're not getting bored and wandering off or getting into trouble. You can also use that stations approach like I talked about earlier so everyone is always doing something. This may take a little while of you teaching them how to do each station and how to do it independently, but once you get it established, it will go much more smoothly. 
Also, you can help the students understand why they're doing this. So tell them why they're in speech therapy, what they need to work on, and then have everyone working towards a goal. So when you get to 80% accuracy on this sound, then you're going to get this. Maybe it's a tangible, maybe it's a, um, they get a special lunch with you, uh, maybe you're working towards their graduation and they don't have to come to speech anymore. Make sure they know what they're working for so that they're gonna be motivated. And then also if you're having lots of behavior problems, I highly recommend that five minute individual sessions model that I just talked about. That works a lot better for kiddos with behaviors because it is a very short session and it's very fast paced so they don't have time to get bored and get off track. You can just knock it out and then send them right back to class. Okay, and here is my final tip, which is how to have a smooth start to a group therapy session. So you should have each child come in and grab his or her folder. So you're gonna have folders for each child in a bin that's easily accessible. And in each folder is going to be a page of work that that child can do independently. You're going to teach the children to practice their independent work quietly until the group starts. So they come in, pick up their folder, come sit down at the table, open it up and start reading their independent work. Maybe it's a word list, maybe it's a worksheet, and they read it quietly to themselves and practice that skill as kind of a warm up while everybody else is coming in and sitting down and you're getting ready. You can also keep their data sheets inside each child's folder and collect the needed data sheets for that session at the beginning. So you can have written on the board whose day it is for data collection and that child hands you a, their data sheet. Also, as you are working through the speech therapy session, you can add words and skills to that independent worksheet as they master them. And then you can make copies of the independent worksheet and send that home as easy homework. So I have an example here of the sheet that I have used. It says speech therapy successes page and it tells um, a little bit about what's, what this page is all about. It gives you instructions so you remember what to write on here. You write down the skills on the blank part and then there's instructions for the parents to practice it when the child gets home. So there is the independent worksheet. All right, I hope you enjoyed my productivity hacks for group therapy for speech therapists. If you would like to download these slides with all of the notes and the um, example of the independent worksheet, you can get that at speechandlanguagekids.com group therapy. Thanks so much for watching and have a fantastic 